Okay. Uh, so good evening, my friends. We find ourselves on Chafdalid Ahmed Bays on 24B. Now, uh, we are starting actually, I believe, all the way from the top. So we're, we're at the top uh, at the words Amar Mar. But while you might be flipping to uh, Chafdalid Ahmed Bays 24B, I wanted to share just two things that I left out from last time. Uh, not things from the Gemara. Of course, we learned the Gemara. But also, there were some supplementary ideas I wanted to share. So one was, uh, one observation was in the Gemara last time, we learned that even though some are not concerned, some are not chayish lemiyuta, some are not concerned for small possibilities of things going awry, when it comes to um, preparing the Kohen Gadol, for his service on Yom Kippur, we make sure, according to some, to have a backup wife available. Um, should anything happen? Because it says in the Pasuk, Vichy Perba Dova Ad Beiso. So that it seems to be a requirement to have a wife. Otherwise, the Kapara is deficient. This is interesting. Ravel Yashiv notes in his Ha'aros. Ravel Yashiv says that apparently uh, Tosos Yantif explains this Mishnah that having a wife is not ma'akev, it's not essential to the atonement being effective, but it's a mitzvah min ha'muvchar, it's just ideal. So that's odd because our Gemara last time said, we go out of our way, let's just get the language, mala asu kapara. So we're going out of our way just for mitzvah min ha'muvchar? I guess you could say yes. I mean, it's Yom Kippur. So if there's ever a time to be machmer, Probably Kapara on Yom Kippur is probably the place to do it. But he's but the Minchas Chinuch points out that there seems to be an incongruity that we would go out of our way for something that's not an essential requirement. Mm -hmm. So that was one thing that I left out last time. The other thing I wanted to share with you is from the Bir Avram. The Bir Avram says, now, also, we had a debate between, oh, was it Rabbi Huda? No, sorry. Was it Rabbi Yossi or Rabbi Shimon? No, not Rabbi Shimon. Rabbi Meir, I think it's Rabbi Meir, Rabbi Meir and Rabbi, Rabbi Yehuda. So whether we are Chayesh Lemisa, should we be concerned that someone could just die? So it's a whole long piece, but one little tidbit from there in the Bir Chasavram, he says that obviously, uh, not obviously, but evidently, uh, it seems that we are not concerned for this idea that someone may just die the next day. It's interesting. Certain sources tug in different directions. For instance, um, I believe in Sperkiavos that one is supposed to do uh Vidoy every day, that one should be one should be doing chuva every day because you never know when you're gonna die. You can't just wait till the end of your life. You never know how long you're gonna live. So you should keep doing chuva every day. Um, but what's interesting is it's happened to me in the field. What's what's interesting is when it comes to the mitzvah of Piri of Rivia of reproducing. We actually uh, give you until 18 years, until 20 years. If you're learning a lot, you could delay it even further. So one would think if you, you know, have to do mitzvos like it's your last day on earth, you should jump on that opportunity as soon as possible. So we have sources apparently tugging in the other opposite direction, telling us that you don't have to, oh, you know, you could prioritize other things and you could plan uh to live another few years so it's it's just interesting to see how different sources seem to be uh tugging in different directions on that but as we say in rabbinic parlance in kamak maharich um we won't go down that rabbit hole right now okay so again for those joining us just now we're on chaf dalma base 24b all the way at the top okay so now we're going to quote something that we brought up in passing we mentioned that you can't use an animal as the walls of your sukkah we, in passing, we mentioned one of the things that you can't use the animal for, in addition to not using it as walls for a sukkah, is you can't use it to write gitten on. You're not allowed to write your get on a live animal. Amar mar, mishun rav yosi aglili, yosi agli amru, af in kosel of gite nashim. So we do not write gite nashim. We don't write gitten on live animals. Obviously, you could, you know, it's not, a, it's not like you can't do it on dead animals. Otherwise, you can't use cloth. So it's on the live animals. My tender of Yossi Aglili, what's his reasoning? So we're going to have a bit of a ping pong session here. You know what I mean when I say ping pong session? So for those who've been with us a little longer, it just means uh, it's one of those instances where the rabbis start uh, picking apart the psukim, saying, well, I use this word to tell me that. What do you use that word for? And then they keep ping ponging back and forth to see how everyone uses every little um, 
uh, inference from the Pasuk. So Amar Mar Mishur Yosei Aglili Amar Af in Kosen Lo Kitei Nashim. So my time to Yosei Aglili. Why not? The Tanya Safer. Ah, Safer. So only Ella Safer. So Minayan. So because it's Safer, that tells me it has to be in a book. But Minayan the Rabbis called Davar. How do I know that it doesn't have to be literally just a book, but I can uh, write and get in different formats? Tama Lomar Ukasavla Mikol Makom. The words ukasavla, right? So the pasuk for writing is ukasavla sefer krisus. You shall write for her a book of severance. Uh, that's that's the I think the my most literal rendering I could give for the pasuk. You know, it's funny we brought this up in our Thursday morning bazaar class. The Torah seems to assume that we already know about an institution called divorce. It says in the event that a man chooses to divorce his wife. Kosovo Saver Creases, you should go ahead and you should write her. Um, here's how you go about divorcing. But it's interesting that the Torah presumes foreknowledge that we are already aware that there is an exit strategy called a divorce. So anyway, just a little how do we know story. this, Rabbi? Sorry? From where do we know this from the Torah? Where in the Torah? This is usually they just take another wife. Dvarim, right? Dvarim Chaf Dalid, Pasa Gimel. Wow. And then yep. what is it reference to? All right, so I'll read you the pasuk. I don't have it. I'll read you the pasuk. It's the Torah or oh. Hashalim. Ah, oh, my favorite. It's a all right. So I've, I've said this joke too many times, right? Someone took a so, someone took a what was it? A collection. Oh, I already forgot my own jokes. Basically, the Torah or Hashalim collects all the psukim in the Gemara. So someone once put there, they said, you know, Hayrish Hashem al Hashas, um, God's commentary on the Gemara. Uh -huh. so get the joke because we really drive from the Sukkim to the Gemara. But if someone's just like Rabinu Tom and just learns the Gemara, so then you learn Sukkim by learning Gemara. Okay. So, anyway, it says, Kigach ish isha uvala. So, a man will take a woman and he will be intimate with her. He'll become a husband to her and they'll be intimate together. By him, lo If she doesn't find favor in his eyes, he must have been because he found uh, some, you know, they break down what that means, but some sort of impropriety. Ukasov la safer creases. He will write for her a book of severance, but and he will give it to her in her hand, and he will send her from his house. Every single word and like letter and vowel in that pasuk is broken down, and we're going to see a little, uh, just a little bit of that right now. So back to the Gemara. Uh, so the words ukasav sounds like I don't care how you write it, write it however you want, wherever you want, whenever you want. Mk matam lomar safer. So Lomar Lacha Ma Safer Dovash Imba Rachaim Vino Ochel Av Kol Dovash Imba Rachaim Vino Ochel. So the word safer comes to be restrictive. It circumscribes the Kasavla. Safer tells me, whoa, 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 hold on there, Charlie. You can't just write a get on anything you want. So it has to be like a safer. Now you don't have to literally make a book out of a get. But what it means is just as a safer is something that doesn't have a spirit in it, it's inanimate and it's not food. So too, anything that is not, you know, animate and not food, you essentially is fair game for writing Gitten. That is a sheet of Rev Yossi. And you could see from there, um, animals are animate objects. They're alive. So therefore, you cannot write a get on animals. Verabanan. So now the sages disagree with him and they read the Pusik differently. Iksiv ba sefer. If it said ba sefer kidaka amrit with a bays as a prefix, ha should have sefer since it only said sefer without the base prefix. The spheres dvarim ba almahu to asa is just telling telling you that when you write the get, you're supposed to tell it over like uh, it's a bit of a story of what happened, so to speak. Uh, it, you don't write their entire life story on on the get in case you're wondering, but meaning it's more of a sepor. It's more of a sepor. It has nothing to do with what material you could write again on. Ah, Rabbana hai of my darshi base. And then what do the rabbis make of the word vikasav? So ahumi vailahu, they infer from there, bichsiva misgareshes, v'ina misgareshes bikesef, that you could only divorce with a document. You cannot divorce with money. Now, why would I ever think that you could divorce with money? Actually, it's a very reasonable half mean. It's a very reasonable uh, suggestion. Sagatite, uh, I would think to say, 
Mahavaya Bekesif, I for Yitzia Bekesif, Kamash Malan. So we have um that we have this idea of a Yatsa Vahisa, that there is a connection uh of the laws of how someone enters a marriage and how someone leaves a marriage. So one would think, okay, Haisha Nikmas Bashosh Rachim. So women can be acquired in three ways: Kesif, Shar, and Bia. So Shtar is only one of the three ways that a kiddushin could be effectuated. Kesif is one of the others. I guess they they didn't consider Bia being one of the, one of the ways out. I guess uh, I guess for obvious reasons. Um, but I don't know. Like you give her some money, um, or I guess she would, or she would give you money. Maybe ah, that, that's interesting in the Havamina. You know, like would you be giving her the money, or she would have to give you the money to get herself back? Uh, that, that that's an interesting question uh, that just occurred to me right now. I would not be surprised that someone. Um, if it's addressed somewhere in the Rishonim or the Achronim, but in that Havamina is the woman giving him money to get herself back to reverse the Kedushan. Uh, I'll just fin- I'll just finish the, um, the the point. I'll take your question, Paul. So basically, at this point, I would think to say that money could be used to exit the the, the marriage, just as it was used to enter Kamash Malan. That's what this. Um, that's what the word Vikasav comes in to tell us. That no, the only method you have for Dissolving the marriage is because of, is by writing, i.e., with a document, with a star, not with money. Paul. I think it answered the question, but I would assume that the issue with one of the issues with using money instead of a, a writing is, you know, this is this is a divorce. You got an issue of Mamzeru. So if there's any doubt what the money was for, interesting. You can make an argument. Well, who why was the money given? How do we know it was for a divorce? It could have been for some other purpose. A, a writing mm-hmm. is clear. Interesting, right? I, I think it, it carries kind of along that, you, you know, it's very clear on that document that it is a get. Uh, the money, but I mean, I guess by the same by the same logic, you know, when someone enters into a marriage, I guess that maybe the difference is that a uh, marriage we usually conduct more publicly. A get is not always done, and it's generally not done in broad daylight. Uh, it's generally done as a more private uh, matter. So, okay, yeah, that's a that's a that's an interesting suggestion, Paul. I do I definitely hear that. Um, yes, I'm, Toby. Isn't there a provision for money on what if a marriage terminates in the ksuba? Yeah, or? yeah, but that's more of an obligation that the man has to his ex wife. It's not the method that's used to actually dissolve the marriage functionally. It's once the marriage dissolves, then he has to give her the money in the ksuba. So maybe that's why it's not one of the th- methods for divorce so that there shouldn't uh, be confusion with interesting. what's in the ksuba. You shouldn't misinterpret why the money's given. Interesting. You know, it's a funny thing because we could kind of try to attribute an impetus to this, at least just, you know, clearly from the Gemara itself, it seems to be just down to hermeneutics, to drushos, but it's always an interesting question. Was there some sort of impetus um, or guiding principle that pointed them in the, that, that direction to darshan the Pusik that way? Uh, we could always ask also about an esmachta, that uh, you know, this is op- operating on a biblical level, but sometimes the rabbis will kind of have an idea, and then they'll find a pasuk to hang their hat on. That's called an esmachta. So, very good point. Uh, but back to our ping pong session. Rav Yosi Haglili. So, hi Svarminole. So, where does Rav Yosi Haglili, who agrees with this, that you that you could only use a get to exit a marriage? So, where does he derive that from? So misafer krisis nafkala, he gets it from the words misafer uh, from safer krisis. How so? Safer korsa of the ain't over acher korsa. So that's to tell us the by putting the words together, safer krisis. All it means to say only a safer can be right. Kares, we talk about the punishment of kares is excision. Same word, like tearing excision. So only a safer, only a get can tear the marriage. Nothing else can can rend it. V'idach. So okay, great. So what do the sages who already have a source for this? What do they make of the fact it says safer krisus? V'idach. They use it to teach the principle that when there is a get given, there can be no strings attached. It has to be a complete severance. Kedetanya. If the husband stipulates when he gives the get that she may never drink wine for the rest of her life, being on condition that you never drink wine for the rest of your life, or on condition that you never go to visit your father's home, that is not called a crisis because when a get is given, they are supposed to separate. And here you're leaving strings attached now. 
Um, so, however, if he says kol shloshim yom, how uh, all thirty days, how raise that creases? Then it is creases because eventually it does terminate. Um, so that he that's what they use creases for. Uh, and Rav Yosi ve'idach mikares creases nafka because it didn't say safer kares; it's a safer creases. Why is it an extra fancy word creases? That's that detail is where he infers this principle that it's an it's a he reads the word creases as um an absolute creases. And Vidach Kares Kresis Lodarshe and the Rabbana, what do they make of the fact is creases not kares? They say that's just the word, nothing to make of it. That's usually how this how this ends, by the way. Usually at, at some point at, at the end of the ping pong match, when I'm just like, sorry, I don't really see the the, the big deal here, I got nothing to make of it. That's just what the Torah says. You're you're reading too much into that one word. Um, I see a bunch of questions. Uh, Paul, and then and then I see Judd. So Paul, Judd, anyone else want to line up in the queue? Okay, Paul. So it says you can't have a contingent get, but I thought men can have a contingency. For example, this get is effective if I don't come back from travel or war or something like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's not that you can't make a stipulation. It's that once the get takes effect, they have they they are completely severed from each other. So what he wants is that there should be a stipulation that lives even after the get is given. The stipulation you're referring to, which is a very good point, Paul. We learned this. You're you're referring to what we learned uh, in the previous year, not too long ago, that a husband can stipulate, "I'm going on a long trip. I don't know if I'll make it back. I don't want you to be considered. Uh, I don't want you to be an aguna, or you know." So basically, he'll make these kind of uh, the stipulation. That the get will take place, um, you know, after a certain amount of time if I don't come back. So, but once the get actually takes effect, that's it. It takes effect. Okay. And Judd? And Paul's question was the same as mine. Oh, good. And do we do we address it? Yes, yes. Okay. Very good. All righty. Um, oh, congratulations. We're at a new Mishnah tonight. Exciting. And uh, the Mish new Mishnah... It it's not too new, to be honest, because as what happens many times, we, we make reference to these ideas in the Gemara already. One who makes a sukkah and uh, it's among the trees and the trees serve as the walls, it is kosher. What do I mean? I don't have my Masifta Gemara with me to show you a picture, but uh, I trust we can we can figure this out together. Basically, the trees are the walls. But the schach does not, Rashi points out, the schach does not actually rest on the trees. There's something else holding up the schach. Now, why are we making this more complicated than it needs to be? Because we'll, we'll talk about this. Because remember, we talked about previously that according to some, the schach should not be put on a maimed that is puzzle. Meaning whatever material is holding up the schach should also be kosher to serve as schach. But trees, even though they grow from the ground, since they're still attached to the ground, they're mechuber lekarka, they are not kosher schach. So that's why uh, we throw in that extra detail. Again, though, you should be aware, we paskin me ikar hadin, meaning if you don't want to do anything with the bells and whistles, you want to keep strictly to the law, we paskin practically that you don't need to be concerned for the mime. And you could, you could put it directly on metal um, and you still have a kosher sukkah. Okay, so let's get into the Gemara. The Gemara basically is just going to present a principle, and then it's just going to give us a bunch of different uh, brysas, which seems like the principle doesn't hold true. And then we say, you know, you just got to read the brysa with one little one little extra detail and saves the day. You'll see what I mean. Any machitza that cannot withstand a standard wind is not an actual machitza. So um, there's this, I forgot this fellow's name. He's uh, basically like the uh, like the father-in-law of, uh, of someone, I'm not going to say the name, someone who comes to the shul. Uh, well, I guess what it means, father of the wife. Um, so, but he's like this like uh, big Tama Chacham who runs like a kolel in a country in Europe. I don't give too many identifying details. And whenever he comes to the shul, um, he always like, you know, finds things that he thinks are not halakhically okay. Um, that, that, that's, that's his fun game that he likes to play. And he comes over to me and, uh, he speaks mostly Hebrew and he comes over to me and starts complaining about this and that. So when he, he came over sukkahs this past year and, uh, he didn't like our sukkah. Um, now 
I, I went on a tour of the sukkah. I think I told you uh, before sukkahs, and I like, identified three different ways that it was puzzle. We right, we should we should do that next year. We should do the next year's sukkahs. Like we should do a tour of the sukkah like beforehand and see. Oh, let's see what we could find, guys. I mean, hopefully it'll be nothing nothing of note. But if there is, you know, it'll be a great a great class field trip. So um, so anyway, he didn't like, and it, he made an he made a good point. I I, I saw this as well that the tarp that we have was blowing in the wind. But we ask in that as long as it doesn't move back and forth more than three tfachim in any direction, what principle could we apply? Well, oh, Toby, you said it, but you, you muted. I think I think I, I think I read it correctly though. Love it. Very good. Exactly. Love it. Because if it's if it doesn't shift more than three tfachim in any direction, that's not meaningful enough, and it's still considered to be in the same place. Um, as you can imagine, there are those who would suggest to be more machmer than that, but, uh, that, that's what I, we relied on though. I, I was looking at it over Sukkot and I, I was starting to get concerned that it was moving a little bit too far out of there, but I was, I was trying not to look too closely because I had to depend on that Sukkot a few times myself. I'm like, do I make a bracha? Do I not make a bracha? Anyway, don't want to scare you guys. So back to our, uh, our Sukkot is fully kosher. Okay. But that was no, the no, wall, no. that was the wall that never had the tarp before. We always had to just the cement by the wall. At the at, at the here at the shul, yeah. Oh, I I guess before my time. Yeah, we didn't always have a tarp uh, going against the outside wall. Okay, yeah. um, I you know it's okay. Well, what do you, Chad? What do you mean? Oh, the 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 wall of the shul is only one side. I'm sorry, the 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 actual building itself that the, that exterior wall. Is one wall, but the rest yeah, it of it was, was never, always. It was never, I don't think it was ever covered with a tarp until last circus. Okay. No, but you still had tarp with the other three walls, and and they would move. Oh, okay. I, but I thought the one that that blew in the wind was the one that was on top of the uh, exterior wall of the building. You know, we'll we'll do we'll do a field trip this coming. Okay, circus. put it on the calendar. Trip. All okay. right. But you, you know what date it has to be. <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> um, all right, so back to our feature presentation. So the Gemara asks, Tanan, Ha'oza sukaso bin ha'ilano, so ilano stefano slak sheira baka azavasi. But how is this principle true? Because in our Mishnah, our Mishnah says you can use the trees as the walls. But don't the trees sway back and forth with the wind? So ha'chamayaskiyan bekashim, we're talking about firm, firm trees, right? Think of, I don't know names of trees, but I don't know, a cedar tree or I don't know something that's like a very firm tree. Um, so how come I ski not? Ah, sorry. So that's what we answered. Ah, but Ika Nofo to Avle. Uh, so aren't doesn't have branches? Won't the branches still sway back and forth? The leaves and the branches. So to Avle behutz of a Daphna. It's kind of like when we were talking about how can you use an animal for the walls. What's the solution whenever something might move around? You have to. You have to introduce one additional detail between the lines. Imagine that it is fastened and tied down with different branches. All right. You tied it all down. It's not moving anywhere or it's not moving more than three tfachim. Tashima. And by the way, this is just going to be the same answer over and over again for every contradiction we bring up. Tashima. Hayasham ilan ogeter o mechita sakanim nido mishum diumid. So remember, there's um, there is something called pasi bureaus. You want to carry, uh, take water out of a well on Shabbos. We have issues of transferring. So you know you have kind of like um, a block here, a block here, a block here, a block here, and you kind of like imagine, even though they are one big, each corner has a square, an ama by an ama. You could kind of imagine that it's hollowed out as if it's each one's making an L shape. So that way you have four corners. That keep the um, that creates its own rishus. So the question here is that you could use the tree, or you could use these reeds, and it's okay. Again, just have to stip. You have to add that little stipulation there that it's all uh, tied down and fastened, and it's not moving anywhere. Good. Next, Tashima Ilan Hamisech Al Aretz. If a tree is like from a lashon of schach, it is providing uh, shade over the earth. So imagine like a, a willow tree or something that's branches go um, either to the ground or it arcs at least within three tfachim of the ground. 
then you are allowed to carry in it. I because it basically right it creates its own Rosh Hashanah. So am I? How cause of Asi? Aren't the branches going to move around? They're also you tied it down. All right. I don't know who's tying down willow trees, but if that's what makes it work, that's what we're going to stipulate. But if that's true, if it's really considered its own private domain that you can carry in it, we're going to see in a moment that for some reason there was a limitation on this. Why can you carry in it no matter how big it is? They gave a limit on, let's say you just have a super huge tree that there's a lot of airspace. It's a super willow, so, uh, but there's a limit to how much you're allowed to carry, how far you can carry. Why is that true? If it's a real private domain, it's a real Rosh Hashanah, there shouldn't be a space limit, right? You could have a huge conference center and it's still considered Rosh Hashanah because it's all enclosed. So the answer is, interesting halacha, because really... Um, the tree is meant to serve, the branches are really separating between the air and the ground. So there's some rule. I'm not super familiar with it, but it's an interesting um, halakhic tidbit that there's a limitation on that. Anyway, that's just a technical point. The point being is fundamentally, once you tie down the branches and they're not moving anywhere, that resolves our problem. It could withstand a Ruach Matsuya, a typical wind, and thus it constitutes a Mechitza. And then one more of these, and they, you know, spoilers, it ends the same way again. Tashima, we have another question about whether uh, withstanding a Ruach Matsuya, a standard wind, is essential. Shavas betel shugavo asara. If you are find yourself on top of a big hill that is at least 10 fachim tall, uh, who may arba amos a basisayim is between four amos and basisayim. The chain beneka, uh, which is a, I believe, a valley, shu amuk asara, who may arba amos a basisayim, or a valley which has those same dimensions. The chain kama kitsura shi bos me makifos osa, or you're in a field of standing grain, and just in the middle of the field, it's all plowed down, and then you have standing grain that is. Tent Fachim around surrounding you, it forms a wall. You can carry in it as much as you want, even, and then you could go beyond it. You, ha you have a tchum extending beyond it of 2,000 amos. Even though these branches, and even though these, not these branches, even though these um, uh, grain, standing grain, are uh, wishing back and forth in the wind. What do we say there? Apparently, you have to add in another detail. Apparently, somehow, don't ask me how, you've made sure to tie down all of the standing wheat around you, and you've made yourself your own artificial wall out of that. The point being is, we've basically been able to contort ourselves to explain all these brysos uh, with a little extra detail that any time that it's made out of a material that seemingly moves in the wind, rest assured, we have to just add in that little detail that they're actually fastened and tied down and they're not moving in the wind. And that's why they constitute mechitzas, according to Rav Achabar Yaakov. And that seems to be how we paskin that a sukkah, not just for sukkah, by the way, we saw El Shabbos and elsewhere, a mechitza, one of the qualities it has to reach a threshold of a wall is that it can withstand a typical wind and not be moving uh uh, what do you say, hither and thither, or to and fro. Okay. Uh, and that brings us, my friends, to the next Mishnah. But we will have to leave that until next time. Achafhe Ahmed Aleph. Any questions? Paul? I'm sorry to monopolize. Is this the basis for hydrant straps on, on uh, sukkahs? Um, I'm not familiar, only because I'm not a sukkah owner, but you're saying the, the straps are to tie down the... the no, they're like straps that that go around the whole circumference of the bottom of the sukkah. Oh, yeah, I know what you're talking about. I mean, probably. It's it's interesting. I love whenever they market these things as and stuff, you know? Like, oh, it's Mahadran thing. Um, so at least they're not telling you it's like you have to do it. You know, at least they're saying it's <laughs> Mahadran, you know? You don't think it's not kosher otherwise. But I would imagine, right, we had one of those canvas sukkahs and tying it down in place so it doesn't just go like this every time there's wind is essential to ensuring that it's kosher.
So in some cases, it might not even be mahadrin. It might just be what we call mi'ikar hadin. It might just be essential. All right, my friends. Wonderful learning together and wishing Good you Shabbos. all a... Thank Good you. Shabbos. Thank you. Wishing you all a restful Shabbos. Thank you. Thank Good you. Shabbos. Bye. Bye.